Our scripture this morning actually comes from John's Gospel in chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Mother and God, you nurture and care for us. Though we call you Father, you, O oh Lord, are much more than this, much more than names and words can describe. You nurture us, and you call out to us. Do we hear your voice? We thank you for your voice in Scripture. And as I expound upon this word, I pray that you would speak to me, through me, in me, and in spite of me. All for your great glory, in Christ our Lord. Amen. So this particular scripture comes after one of Jesus' famous proclamations, one of his I am statements. He says, I am the good Shepherd. You may not think much of shepherds, you may not know much about shepherds, but throughout Scripture, the image of the shepherd is one who leads God's people. The flock is not just a bunch of woolly animals who are bleeding their heart out. Instead, it is a people in need of leadership. At the beginning of time, Abel was a shepherd. His brother Cain was jealous of them, and God murdered him. Or, and Cain murdered Abel. And God banished Cain away. But even in spite of that, God did not ban abandon Cain, but instead continued to shepherd him, in spite of him killing his own shepherd brother. Fast forwarding into the scripture and later in Genesis, God calls a shepherd in the land of Tehran, or Tehran, a man named Abram, who was later to be called Abraham, the father of many nations, a shepherd of the faith. Later, a fugitive running from the law who marries a woman who is the daughter of of a shepherd named Jethro is called to take his shepherd's staff and deliver God's people out of Israel. His name is Moses, and he was a shepherd by trade. A young boy in Bethlehem, tending the flocks of his father Jesse, was called out into the battlefield to use the same sling he had used to protect the flock to kill lions and to kill bears, to kill a giant named Goliath. He would become the shepherd of God's people as the king of Israel. His name was David. Then a descendant of David comes on the scene. He is the son of a carpenter. And yet he makes a bold claim. I am the good shepherd. What are the people to make of this? He was not a shepherd by trade. So, what was he 
say? He was saying plainly to them, I am the Messiah, I am the promised one of Israel, the anointed one. As David was anointed to be your king by the prophet Samuel, so I was baptized by John in the Jordan to be your chosen one, to be your leader. Do you hear my voice? And yet the people were still asking, when will you tell us? Tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? Jesus could not have said it any more plainly than to say, I am the good shepherd. And that is why he said, I did tell you, but you did not believe. So the question is, is do we hear Jesus' voice? Do we hear what he's plainly telling to us? He says to us, listen to me. How might we hear his voice? Well, certainly through scripture, but definitely through the wisdom of our mothers. You see, sheep can hone in on the voice of their shepherd, of the one who takes care of them above all other voices. So we're going to show you a little video, and it's going to kind of demonstrate to you just how good sheep are at listening to the voice of their shepherd, to their master. And the question you need to ask yourself is, can you hear the voice of God in the same way? things, though. 
We need love, and we need to be nurtured. Mutt's research has kind of discovered what wisdom has long known, that children from the very beginning form an attachment and a bond with their mother. And this is, love is essential to life. So researchers have long known that newborns recognize and prefer their mom's voice. And any new mother can tell you that the sound of her voice delights her new baby. Some babies also seem soothed by noises like whirring fans and washing machines. But that's probably because they sound similar to what they heard in the womb. Familiar noises and familiar voices. Amazingly though, Babies may be able to recognize their mother's voice even before birth. A study done at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, found that babies in the womb actively listen to their mother's voice during the last 10 weeks of pregnancy. Then at birth, they can distinguish between the sound of their native language and a foreign language, suggesting that moms are their baby's first language teachers. Indeed, one of the voices that God gives us in our lives are our parents. Now, I realize that for some, this may be our cure because perhaps your mother wasn't the voice that you needed. Maybe it was the, your aunt or your grandmother or a teacher, someone who nurtured you and was like a mother to you. That's why I sometimes think that a better name for Mother's Day would be Mothering Sunday. That's what it's called in Great Britain, Mothering Sunday. So that's what I want us to focus on, is not necessarily just the person of the mother, because many of us have good experiences, but some of us also have difficult experiences. So in general, the idea of being nurtured, we need it, others need it. And this is how we know that things are of God. So some basic questions and uh, statements that your mother or someone like your mother may have told you. And are you listening? Did you wash behind your ears? Are you wearing clean underwear? To the basics. This is important. This is not in Proverbs, but this is in the Gospel of your mother, all right? <laughs> Did you say please and thank you? This is one my mother would always ask me, continue them. Did you write a thank you note, honey? <laughs> no. Don't eat that candy, it will spoil your dinner. I must confess, um, sometimes I will just go ahead and eat my dessert first. <laughs> so, but mom is right, it does spoil your dinner. Or how about this one? Just wait until your father gets home. <laughs> Are you listening to the voice of your mother? Perhaps, though, it wasn't your mother, but another who pointed you to the voice of God who you could hear the love and nurture. That love was given by God. It is a gift to each of us. The gift of mothering is a gift to all of us that God gives us. The gift of the church, as mother church, is a gift to all of us that God gives. Do we hear the voice of God? Can you see what I'm saying? God is speaking to us. God provides what we need as the Good Shepherd to lead us. Do we cling to those things which we know to be true? Do we cling to the basic wisdom of our families? Do we cling to the voice of Scripture telling us, I am the Good Shepherd? Do we cling to the community of faith that we call Mother Church? These are the ways that God is speaking to us. These basic ways. We just need to turn off the chatter on the radio, on the television, on our computers, 
listen long enough to hear those most important and basic things that we've always known to be true. Even from the very day we were born and before it. God has placed eternity in our hearts. This is what it tells us in Ecclesiastes. So can we hear that voice of eternity calling out to us? I love you. I care for you. You are my child. Yes, God is our Father, make no mistake, but He can also nurture us. He can also mother us. We call Him Father because He's spiritually our Father. Our mothers are often the ones that we see closer at hand in the flesh. But it's still important for all of us to aspire to mother others, to nurture, to share love, to care, to be shepherds in a way that protect the flock. So brothers and sisters, on this Mother's Day, will you listen to the voice of God? Will you listen to the basic things? Will you appreciate that He has given us all that we need? even if it's not always what we want. I pray that you do, and I pray that you will share this love with others, that you will seek to nurture others and mother them, even those who may have a difficult experience of today, who may miss their mother, whatever it may be. There is something that all of us can celebrate today, I pray. May it be so for you, and may it be so for me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we celebrate the gift this day of your love, nurture, and of your voice that we hear through the voice of our mothers and those who have mothered. O oh Lord, we know that this is a wonderful day for some and a difficult day for others. And yet, O oh Lord, you are a good shepherd who leads us into the valleys where we drink at the cool waters of your wisdom and of your grace. And you even lead us through the deep and dark valleys, O oh Lord. You remain constant. O oh Lord, we pray that we would open up our hearts, open up our minds, and open up our ears to hear your voice in the most basic of things, in the wisdom of our mothers, in the words of Scripture, and in the love and nurture of our Mother Church. We ask all these things in Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Stand as you are able for our closing.